So here's that liverwort. It's actually really cool and it loves water. I mean, it's growing right on top of the rocks. If I pull it apart, you can see there's not really much to it. There's not even really that much of a root structure. There's, let's see if we can wash some of that off. But yeah, it just kind of grows as this weird mass. It's almost like cabbage. I wonder if the koi like it. Let's throw some in for them. See if it comes back and go, oh, they love it. Look at that. You guys are discovering something the same time I am. They love liverwort. Welcome back to Team Aquascape. We're gonna finish up the tour of plants around my yard. It actually worked out kinda good because a lot of plants, the first time I videotaped them, weren't quite budding and leafed completely out and things have changed quite a bit in three to four days and you guys probably are seeing the same thing in your gardens. It's still a little cold out here. It's probably in the mid 50s, but man, it's crazy. The flowers on the contorted Louisa crab have all dropped, but other flowers are coming up. So let's kinda go around the yard and finish this tour and we'll see where it goes. So while I'm sitting here, sitting kind of like in my outdoor kitchen area, for me, even talking about this part in the design a little bit, what's kind of cool about the outdoor kitchen is how close it is to the back door, which of course is the kitchen right in here. I was never a big fan of grilling until I made it super easy just to walk from there to there. And then when we come over here, you can kind of just overlook the whole pond. But this tree last week wasn't about to flower and in another three days it'll be covered in white flowers all over the place. So this is a nanny berry. It gets pretty big. It's about as tall as it's gonna get. It gets about 15 feet tall. But notice how it's really blocked out the pavilion back there. And the purpose of that is just try to create some of that mystery. So when you walk into the backyard, you're more focused on this. There's that contorted Louisa crab. Lost all of its flowers but still has a pretty cool shape. The beach tree. Look at how much bigger the leaves have gotten in such a small amount of time. It's crazy. That Appalachian red bud still holding strong, which is why I love, love red buds because they hold their flowers so much longer than all the other stuff. But we'll kind of move through here. Look at the hostas, how much bigger they've gotten in just a few days. Keeping flocks is all starting to flower. All right, so as we move this way, we come over into here. This is kind of my pavilion. You can see it's a little disheveled, <laughs> if that's a word. Got my music playing, got some of my water treatments out here. Cooler from the weekend, kids swing. Coming over here, the main waterfall. There's a dandelion right there there, just slowly driving me insane. But a couple great plants up in here. One is this one right up in there, that chartreuse one, Creeping Jenny. It's such an easy, easy plant to grow. It can grow in water, it can grow on land. It's great for softening the transition from where the water ends and where the land begins. You can see it just kind of creeping out over the rocks, over in areas that bright, bright chartreuse color is a pop. Doesn't flower or anything, but it's a great accent here and there. Be careful with it though, because it can spread quite a bit. The nice thing is the root structure is not very deep so to thin it out is pretty effortless. Another cool plant that showed up in here is obviously moss. There's lots of moss kind of just all over. All of that just naturally showed up and if you look really close right there that's liverwort. So there and down there kind of showing up over there. That stuff must have come in on the ducks because I sure didn't plant it and it was all over the place over there last year. The, the ducks actually came in and ate quite a bit of it but another section of my pond has it all over the place and I'll show you that a little bit later but as we're sitting here you can see the candles on the weeping scotch pine have gotten quite big when these things start opening up you can smell them quite a bit it's really got that strong evergreen scent to it down here there's kind of a volunteer it's a tiger-eyed sumac that ran from over here but I love when these plants are just kind of popping through other areas it looks incredible I've got another quick question for you while I'm standing here, give me your opinion on something that I'm struggling to make a decision on. You see this weeping scotch pine? I'm debating on actually cutting this one off and opening up that line of sight a little bit more, or do I continue to train it to get all the way out over into this space and create more of like a half moon type window as that thing matures? And it will, like I keep cutting it back every year, but I think it's at the point now where I can start training it with some branches and bamboo and stuff and get it to come over. Just a quick side, side, side thing. All right, we come back over here. There's that black lace elderberry. You can see how much the leaves have opened up on there. The cotoneaster, not the cotton easter, has even got small little red.
red berries on it. So it's covered with those little red berries. Those will be gone soon. And then the rest of the year is just kind of a nice green carpet. Hostas are filling in. That bridal wreath plant is ready to just explode. That thing's gonna be covered in flowers. And as that thing gets bigger and bigger, eventually all of that white is gonna be touching the water in here, which is gonna look incredible. You can see some of the allium spring bulbs are starting to pop up. None of those guys were open a few days ago. I love planting all the bulbs, especially this time of year, because everything's still kind of sleeping and, and slowly waking up. And so that trick of planting a few bulbs every year, whether that few is 10 bulbs a year or 100 bulbs a year or 1,000 bulbs a year, just discipline yourself to do it and uh, you'll really, really enjoy the reward you get every spring. I love always seeing this allium come up every year and, and the tulips were a new thing for me, but it looks fantastic. That hydrangea is really filling in. Soon as these tulips die off, that hydrangea every year comes all the way out to about halfway on the rock here. There's a crimson queen Japanese maple sitting back in there. That's getting close because you can really, really pay attention to how different the leaf structure is on this compared to the her blood good Japanese maple. So it's really, really graceful. It doesn't get very tall. It might come up to like a four, I've even seen some five foot in Illinois, but very rarely are you gonna see them that big, especially in Illinois. The Japanese sweet flag, the allium, all just awesome plants. As we come around, oh, while we're here, I almost forgot. So here's that liverwort. It's actually really cool and it loves water. I mean, it's growing right on top of the rocks. If I pull it apart, you can see there's not really much to it. There's not even really that much of a root structure. There's, let's see if we can wash some of that off. But yeah, it just kind of grows as this weird mass. It's almost like cabbage. I wonder if the koi like it. Let's throw some in for them. Let's see if it comes back and oh, they love it. There, there's a bunch. Oh, look at them tear it apart. That's so awesome. Look at that. You guys are discovering something the same time I am. They love liverwort. I think they're now thinking that they're getting their normal food though. <laughs> We'll continue to move around. I love different types of evergreens. This is a stone Swiss pine. It'll get big. The reason I planted it here is because these junipers back and through here are really thinning out quite a bit. You can see some dead branches up in there. I lost one last year. There was another one over there that I lost not too long ago. I'm not really confident on the health of these guys and what's gonna happen in the future. I've planted a tree for the future. So if those tend to die off, then this can start coming up and kind of fill in that space. I've got another weeping white pine that's called Angel Falls. It stays way more slender than some of the other weeping white pines, way more compact. And I just like the different textures against each other. And as this like gets thinned out and the ginkgo tree starts developing, that'll just be a cool little accent back in there. We got a bald cypress back in here and we're getting a little bit away from the pond. Probably should have moved the mower. It's not super photogenic, but <laughs> it was a favorite plant of mine. This is a Japanese lace bark pine. It always struggled back in here. And as these arbs got bigger and bigger, it really kind of blocked a lot of its sunlight. I also think it gets a little bit too much water here. There's a above ground pool that gets drained every now and then over into here. And I think the wet feet on this thing just ultimately killed it off. And so I got this new hemlock. It's called Golden Duchess. It gets about four to five feet tall. This guy's about six feet tall, but it loves dense shade. Kind of has that weepy structure to it. I love hemlocks too because they have that softer needle and it's just a cool contrast between some of the stuff happening in here. So I'm excited to pull that out and get that in and plan for the future. If we come back over and through here, you can see my tunnel that I've been working on for the last five years and I think they're almost touching, not quite. I mean, it's so close, right? So maybe one more year after this year, this will be solid. And so every year I just kind of give this a haircut, give it a haircut, never let it get too long. If you cut it back too hard it's gonna get really brown in there and you can see how we still get a lot of new growth in here if I just keep consistently giving it a haircut so that's really my pond there's that marsh marigold one of my favorite plant you know all the flowers are now gone they were here last
last week. There's a few left, but it's a great plant in the spring. Flowers early, early, early in the season before anything else in my garden flowers. And those flowers will hold for about two to three weeks before they take off. The rest of the year, it just kind of looks a lot like ladies mantle. So here's ladies mantle, and then here's that marsh marigold. So they're very, very similar. And so it really just looks like a big mess. So that's a wrap, guys. I mean, that's the garden. If you saw something off in the distance that I didn't explain, if you saw something that you want to see a little closer, if you have any other questions, even plants that you're not sure of, you think this would be good by the garden or not by the garden, comment, guys. Just comment, 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 and I'll see if we can't answer a bunch of those for you. Hey, this was so much fun. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to join me on the tour, plants around the pond, and we'll do it again next week. See you soon. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye.